Hey, hey, Tony guys here, popping in with a little Sunday sermon. Now listen to me. One of the things that I realize as humans is a lot of times we, we lean so much. We lean so much on grace. And grace is real. Mercy is real. And it's new every day. But the thing about it is, is a lot of times is we try to manipulate. We try to manipulate God. And we get into a place of complacency. And we call it grace. And we confuse that we forget that faith without work is dead. And we think that we could just have faith, but not really work on ourselves or not really do the work, not really be the gospel, not really go out and set an example and live right. And we think that we can live just like the world. And so it, I cannot tell you how many people that I talk to that God come out of their mouth every other word. And then when I say, well, are y'all sleeping together? Uh, well, okay, well, well, see, that's the one thing that I know God is not pleased with. Um, so, well, to make a long story short, uh, Yes, we, yes, yes, we are sleeping together. Oh, and so, and, and, and so you sing in the choir? Um, yes, I'm in the choir. And he, he sings in the choir and, and a deacon in the church? Uh, yes, yes, he is, uh, one of the elders and yes, he's in the choir as well. Okay. And so y'all in fornication. And y'all lead the couples y'all lead the couples ministry. Um, yes, yes, we do singles ministry, couples ministry. We also uh, take turns speaking during the youth ministry. But um, so yes, yes, we are. And I know God is not pleased, and I know it's not the right thing to do. But it's like you know, it's like what are you gonna do? And I'm like, uh, do the right thing. Um, pray for the strength to the God that you say you believe in um, is, is he not strong enough to give you the strength and the courage to stay off your back if you say he real if you say you believe in him but you talking about how you know good the love making is how can you lead your co-worker who look into you as an example how can he or she believe in what you believe if you going to church but you an atheist and see this in every area it ain't just about fornication that's just an example but a, a, another example is people who say they believe in a god but don't and if you and if you atheist this not for you this ain't for you to be commenting on this ain't got nothing to do with you this talking to the people who believe in God and know God but have fallen into a backslidden state and living in a state of complacency in the name of grace and mercy and see yes everyone will fall short but the thing about it is is God would not be mocked and it's still work that got to be done read about the children of Israel and when they stopped doing the work and they got complacent and they wanted to do this and do that and serve this and serve that what did God do and so you have to really understand that, yes, excellence is still required. Like a pursuit of perfection is still required. You know, Jesus said, be perfect as my father in heaven is perfect. Yeah, yeah. He said everybody going to fall short, but you still got to go and sin no more. That means that if you're going to trip and fall, it can't just continuously be willing to willing sin and you expecting blessings to abound it's just not how it works because then that would make a mockery of god if you living in fornication if you stealing from the job if you stealing from the government if you stealing from friends or family if you lying if you cheating if you backbiting if you're gossiping if you're doing everything that is contrary to 
God, how can you expect God who is righteous to turn and just pour out all kinds of blessings? Because what would those blessings do? It would reinforce that your willing complacency is okay. Now, yes, you will be covered. You will be graced. You will live and not die. You know, you will make it like the natural order of life will happen. There are atheists who are billionaires. There are atheists who are millionaires. There are people who have never believed in any type of spirituality and making all kind of money, got a big name. And because the world is set in motion, the world is set in, emo in motion. God going to rain on the just and the unjust. It's, it's set in motion. So it's not to say that just because you believe in a higher power, you're going to be successful financially. Now, you will be successful peacefully. But finances, that just depends on what you're doing. You know, what you're doing, how you're serving, where you're working. Not every job is connected to financial abundance. Some jobs going to pay 30000 a year even if you are the absolute best teacher in the world if your district pays 30k a year that's what you're gonna make but if you plan if you're praying and believing and hoping for more then guess what you may find a side gig that you make 30k on your side gig selling them red velvet cakes on sunday uh doing your stitching and your sewing creating your pdf downloads for other teachers that you put on the websites that teacher go to to buy these worksheets for their classroom and now your worksheet's selling so much that they featuring you on the home page and you making more from your pdf downloads than you than your school district pay you but see that clarity that vision that wisdom that favor that's going to come from you having a right heart in the right place and not trying to play God. And see, people always try to manipulate the scripture. I remember growing up and being in the church from the age of six, I would watch grown Christians argue with scripture. Well, uh, uh, well, listen, Ecclesiastes 39 and 1 say this. Oh, well, John 3, 5 say this. Oh, well, Deuteronomy 48 and 1 say this. Oh, well, hold on, let me look. Uh, Galatians 46 and 99 say this. And I will watch grown folks go back and forth arguing with scripture. Just and that's what we do but guess what our interpretation of the word will fail us every day and this is what killed me by people we try to preach and quote and all of this and barely pass comprehension class barely got out of english class and we think we finna fully and wholeheartedly on our own understanding own cognizance understand a holy text and be telling it all wrong but one thing is when we get it wrong one thing is the heart's position one thing is God being able to see your heart's posture your heart's position and what you are trying to do if you trying to manipulate and get over it's a price to pay if you trying everything and you seeking righteousness it's reward it's going to be a price to pay just in life because you're going to be attacked spiritually but you got to also realize and understand that you're going to be taken care of you're going to be protected and i'm a living witness i'm a living witness that my life changed for the better when my heart's position changed i could quote all the scripture in the world I could sit in church every single Sunday, every single Sunday, quote all the scripture in the world and still be broke, busted, and disgusted. Still be downtrodden, looking like who shot John and forgot to kill him. Tore up from the flow up. But then when my heart changed to a place of purity, to a place of righteousness, 
Now, at that point, I became good ground. At that point, I became good ground. At that point, God could really open the windows of heaven and start to pull out like he never did before at that point. And there, and there was some, and, and it's going to be people that when you are in right standing, don't mean you perfect. It means your heart's effort is perfect because you are in pursuit of righteousness. Like Jesus said, be perfect as my father in heaven is perfect. When, when he forgave the lady, he said, go and sin no more. He didn't say, hey, let me tell you something. Go and do the same thing tomorrow. <laughs> go ahead. Go and sin up tomorrow because my father in heaven do not care. Hey, just, just sin. Go ahead. Where you seen that at? Where you seen that at? What did he say? Go and sin no more. He already to let you know everybody gonna fall short, but he said, you can't be looking to trip. Oh, here go a hole right here. Let me stick my foot in. Okay, here go a hole right here, Lord. Up, uh, up, uh, Lord, I tripped and fell in the bed. And that's how we do. That's how we do. Oh, Lord, I tripped and fell. Oh, legs open. Pants unzipped. On top of that woman. Like you ain't see that in your mind. Like there wasn't a way of escape. Like there wasn't strength and wisdom and clarity readily available to you. You act like you just fell in it. Oh, Lord, she tripped me and I just happened to fall in there with my Trojan on and everything, just fell it. And then got to get up and preach tomorrow. Up there laying hands on people. You laying hands and the Lord seen what them hands been doing. Oh, uh, Pastor. Oh, uh, Pastor. Pastor. Oh. Uh, your hand had a little. Oh, uh, Pastor. It, it's okay. Just do it like this because we had COVID and everything. And just with everything going on. Just kind of, you could just do it like this right here. She smelt that. That handle. What you been doing with that hand? Oh, ain't nothing wrong with it. Because I'm asking it unto the Lord. Ain't nothing wrong with a little toy. What your mind doing? Where your mind at? Where your mind at? The playground that your mind in? Is the Lord in there? What he saying you do? All that lust? Yeah, this is what we got to be confronting. This is what we got to confront. Every day you got to be working. Yeah, you're not going to be perfect, but you got to be working. Your faith ain't your faith ain't good enough. Your faith with works, you got to be working. And this is the thing is we living in a society that's being led to hell in a handbasket with gasoline draws on because we being lulled to sleep by the adversary sitting right in the church amongst us telling us oh you ain't got to worry about that Jesus died on the cross he knew everything you gonna do girl, girl you better get your little bit of that thing Ooh, let, me, let me tell you let me tell you deacon up there when I tell you you got a thing on here oh. Then you, then you sitting up there consulting with the Lord. It just see you like ain't nothing going right. Don't nothing go right. It's like everything I try to do ain't nothing going right. The parable in the Bible told us about the seeds that's being sown. Uh, the seeds that's trying to be sown. Some falling on stony ground. Some being plucked up by the foul of the air. And it just some, it just a, a, a select few that get in good soil. So you got to ask yourself, am I good ground? And I done lived it. So listen, you can argue how you want to argue. You can argue how you want to. I'm telling you what I done live. I'm telling you what I'm living. I'm telling you what I have experienced when my heart's position changed. When I stopped trying to play God like a genie in the, bite, in the bottle. I stopped trying to use God like an ATM machine, like a lottery ticket. 
And I started positioning myself and my heart and my mind for righteousness. That's when I started to see the change. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you a change and a favor and a blessing that man can't explain. So I ain't telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. And yes, it's going to be hard times. Yes, it's going to be struggle. Even when you're doing everything you know how to do right. It ain't all about your works, but it is. Your works do matter. We understand that we understand that you saved by grace through faith. But we also understand that your faith without works is dead. We also understand that according to your faith, be it unto you. We also understand the instruction from Christ to be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. So you just can't take one little thing and say, oh, well, it's ain't everybody go fall short. So let me just keep tripping in this same hole every day. <laughs> ain't, Lord, I ain't do nothing but cheat on my taxes. My goodness, I ain't getting nothing but $9,999 back. Lord, I stayed under the $10,000 mark. I mean, my goodness, these people scamming anyway. Oh, sorry, Uncle Sam, what you want me, Lord, to deal with $3,000? <laughs> Really? Yeah. Yeah. And trust them for a raise. Trust them for a side gig. Trust them to pull out in your ministry and your, your purpose. And still to keep cheating on your taxes. Still to keep cheating on the SBA loan. Still to keep cheating on the PPP loan. And then hollering, Lord, Lord. Still to keep falling in the bed in sin. And then hollering, Lord, Lord. Come on now. Come on now. It ain't for everybody. You'll see in the comments who's spirit convicted. Because cause what 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 the grandma say? A hit dog holler. A hit dog holler. If you hollering, that let me know something. That let me know truth rolled over your toe. And you got to Let's see. This is not because John 39 and 1 and Lucas... And Galatian lessons and Ecclesiastes and Corinthians say, yeah. and the people who be guilty, the people who the word and sat in their lap, be having the, the uh, uh, a comment longer than the Bible itself. Like, listen, listen, the proof in the pudding, proof in the pudding. I just, I, when I was young and when I was old. Never have I seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So you can argue how you want to argue. But I'm going to tell you this right here. You got to stop being complacent in your walk with the Lord. And you got to make sure that your heart is in the right position. And you're not trying to mock God. You're not trying to fool God. You're not fooling nobody. So why are you out here? <laughs> And in the next moment, that M F. -er, the next moment, you in all kind of sin, and so you got this here group of people who look at you like the tax collector was in the Bible, like the Pharisee. But then you got this group of people over here. Thank you. Walk on water. Thank you. Literally, could go out to the Atlantic Ocean and walk across there. Because you're trying to play God. But see, God see you when nobody else see you. God see you in the dark. See, God know the position of your heart. Not what your mouth hollering by, but the position of your heart. And when I start to live my life like that, when I start to live my life in the dark, understanding that the light is still shining on me, that's when I saw a change publicly. Like the good word tell you that what's done in secret gonna come to the light. What's done in the dark gonna come to the light. So eventually, what's doing in the dark, you're gonna get exposed in the light. So you gotta understand that. That your behind the scenes is going to eventually determine your highlight reel. In every aspect of life, how you work and how you prepare, that's what's going to show up. That's what's going to show up. Hey, this Tony Gavin, God bless you. We'll talk soon.